is Sota Daf Chafbeis, Sota 22. So we're going to start on the top of Chafbeis and Medalaf on the second line, where the Gemara said, In Merkara Vashana, Oshimish Talmidi Chachamim, Rabbi Lazar says, Hareza Amaretz, if somebody was, he studied the Torah, he studies the verses, and he studies the Talmud, Kara Vashana, but he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't Meshamish Talmidi Chachamim. So, most of the commentaries on the text here are mean to say that he doesn't have a Rebbe to teach him. But literally, Shemush is when you're around the Torah scholar and you help them with their stuff, you drive them to places, you, you're like a little bit like their secretary, and, but you're around them all the time. And that's, that's the best way to learn because then you know instinctively how they would act in certain circumstances and you know what what they would do in that circumstance. And that's like, if you're around a great, a great rabbi, then there are a living Torah and you're able to incorporate that into your body. So, so that's why Rabbi Lazar says, somebody who is Kara Vashana, well, Shemesh, he didn't, he didn't do Shemush, is an Ama Aretz, because we're going to suspect that there's something off with him. So therefore we're suspecting that he doesn't, he, he didn't do the maestros or the tah- or the tahoros, the taharos. So therefore, under those circumstances, we're we're not going to be able to assume that his food is kosher. Uh, more than the books is the transmit the way they're transmitted, and and that's the key here. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani says, "Harez a boor." Such a person is a boor. Rabbi Yana Yomer harez a kuti. A boor, Rashi says, is worse than amarts. Rabbi Yanni says this person's a kuti, meaning you can't even eat their bread or their wine. Rabbi Alcha Bar Yaakov says, I raise a mugush. Rashi says that a mugush is like, from the word like magic, like a magician, meaning to say that he's, he's just, he does magic and he says words even though he doesn't understand the, the full meaning. And so therefore, that's like this person, he can repeat the words of the Torah, but the Torah is not really a part of him. Hinchi says it's logical to say like Rav Acha Yaakov because people say Ratin Magusha Vuloyada May Amar that the Magusha, the ma- the magician, he moves his lips. Magusha like magician. Last time we studied this Talmud, we studied with my friend Bradley Fields, who was a blessed memory. He was a magician. He never, but the magician used to say this, these things, but he doesn't know what he was saying. That's not like Bradley. Bradley always said that this is just sleight of hand. It's not dark magic. God forbid he would never say that. But in those days, the magician was saying that he was saying stuff, but he didn't know what he was saying. So to Tani Tana Voyada, so to this, this person who, who studied, but he doesn't study with, uh, with a Torah scholar, He's saying it over, but he doesn't know what he's saying. Turn Rabban on Ezu Amaretz. What's the definition of an Amaretz? Kol she'enu kora kriyashma shachas v'arvis bibir chosel. Whoever doesn't recite the Shema with its blessings. So Shema, we know, is in the Torah. But this person is not accepting the rabbis. The rabbis say you have to recite the Shema with its blessings before and after. And this person is not accepting the, the psaq of the Rabban that's the position of Rabbi Meir. Anybody who doesn't put the tefillin on. Tefillin is also something that you have to accept the rabbinic interpretation because all, all the halachos of tefillin are halachos Moshe Misinai. So many of the halachos of tefillin are halachos from Moshe Sinai that we have the Mesorah to transmit it down. So it's basically saying the same thing, that you, you are Meshamish Tamidi Chachamim. Benazi Omer Kolsha and Lot Sitzis Bibigdo. He says anybody who doesn't have tzitzis on their garment. The tzitzis we see, Benazi was the person who never got married. He said that he said he said earlier that what can I do? Torah is my I'm married to the Torah. So tzitzis is something you hold on to to if you're afraid you're going to sin with you, if a man is afraid he's going to sin with a woman, he holds on to the tzitzis. That prevented from sinning. So maybe because Benazi never got married, he wanted to make sure that everybody was wearing their tzitzis. Anybody who has children, but he doesn't raise them to study Torah. So 
Acherim Omrim, I feel Kora Vashona, Acherim taught, even if they were Kora Vashona, and it's a little bit interesting because generally speaking, throughout the Shas, whenever it says Acherim, that's a reference to Rebbe Meir, but it can be Rebbe Meir here because Rebbe Meir says, what's, what's the Amar? It's anybody who doesn't read Shema with its blessing. So what do we have the Acherim here giving another per- interpretation? So therefore, Tosa Sons say it says not Rabbi Meir here, so we don't know who it is. So the Acherim Omer, the Acherim say, I feel Korvashona, but Shimish told me the Chamin Zewa Maaretz. Even if he studies the Torah and the Mishnah, but he doesn't serve Torah scholars, he's an Amaretz. Karva Oloshana, if he reads it, but he doesn't study the Mishnah, I raise a poor. Lo Karva Oloshana, but let's say he doesn't read the verses and he doesn't read the Torah and he doesn't read the Mishnah. I'll have a cause of Omer about you. Vizaraz, he has based Israel, that's based Yehuda, Zerah Adam, Zerah Behemah. And I planted seed in the house of Israel, in the house of Judah, the plant, the, the, plant, the seeds of man and the seeds of animal. You need to say it's animalistic of you. If you don't study Torah, if you're not trying to strive for greater spiritual connection to God, you're almost acting like an animal, animalistic. So now the Gemara says, the Gemara says, we're going to study also somebody who doesn't study with Torah scholars, the danger of not studying with Torah scholars. It says in the Pasuk in Mishlei, chapter 24, verse 21, that Shlomo Melch said to Rechavim his son, Yira Hashem Espini, fear God, my son, and also, and also, Vamelech, also fear the king, Vim Shonim Al Tisarev, and don't mix up with the people who are Shonim. So, what is Shonim? These are the people who study Alachos. So what does it mean? Meaning to say that these are the people who study Mishnayos, but they are not Mishamish Torah scholars. And so therefore, they don't understand the reason for the Mishnayos. So don't get mixed up with those people. So the verse says, Shita, it's obvious. The Gemara explains, the Maudadema is shown in Bechet. You might have thought that Shona means don't get mixed up with people who continue to do the same sin. Like Ravuna said, if a person does a sin and then he repeats it, in his mind it becomes permitted to, to, to him. Kamash wants, we might have thought it's that, so we're saying no. He's, Shlomo is warming his son, don't get mixed up with the people who they want to study Torah, but they don't want to accept the tradition upon themselves. The tradition of how to act, which we get only from our chazal, only from our, our sages. Tana tanayim mevalei olam. The tanayim are the ones, the, meaning to say those who, tana really means the, those who are studying the Mishnah, they add the tradition on the Mishnah. So these are the people who are destroying the world. The Gemara says, what? Mevalei olam, Salgadaita? You think they're destroying the world? No, we we're referring to the people. They study the Mishnayos. They study the Dafyomi. And as a result of their, and as a result of their alacha, uh, and as a result of studying that little bit of knowledge, they, they paskin. It's not enough. You have to be Mishnah Mishtorah scholars. You have to, uh, you have to have a Mishnah of Pesach in order to paskin. Are these people really destroying the world? They're settling the world. It says that those who study Mishnayos are that they're the Olam. They're they're settling the world. Those who paskin alacha from the Mishnah, it's a big mistake. Isha Prusha. We said that a, a woman who is a Prusha, a Prusha usually means ascetic, meaning she she refrains from physical pleasures. She's destroying the world. And the Mara says, Tan Rabbanan, Pesua Tzalyanis, a virgin girl who's praying, the Almana Shovavis, and a widow who's always going around visiting people, the Katan Shilokalo Chadashav, and a minor girl, and a minor who didn't complete his months. Generally speaking, we say a minor doesn't complete his months, is either like when he's born, he's born prematurely, or maybe here. It's going to mean something else. We'll see from the Gemara. These are people who destroy the world. Is it really the case that these people destroy the world? Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan once said, we, we learned about the proper way to have fear of sin from a virgin. 
Do Rabbi Yochanan Shama Lahi Basula? Rabbi Yochanan once heard a virgin, the Nafla Apa, she fell on her face, Vikama Ribona Shalom. And she said, Master of the universe, Barasa Gan Eden, Barasa Ganem. You created Garden of Eden, the Garden of, and, and also hell. Yes, my father. Uh, yes, Abba. You're on mute. You're on mute. I can't hear you. You have to unmute. All right. So he says, so he said, Barasa Gan Eden, Barasa Ganem. You created the Garden of Eden and you created Ganem. You created the Garden of Eden and you created Ganem. Barasa Tzadikim and Barasa Rishayim. You created, yeah, Abba, you want to say something? You skipped two lines. Okay, you're right. Yes. Okay, I'll go back. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. Shkoyach. Okay. So we'll go back to two lines. Okay. You can't get away with anything. Okay. Rama Rabbi Yochanan, Lamana Yer HaSeim Besuah, but keep star. We learn how to get re- So does he really say this is the case that you learn Yer HaSeim from a, a virgin who prays and, and fear of sin how can we say that? So let's start all thing again. The virgin girl who prays and the widow goes around and the minor hasn't completed his must, they destroy the world. Gomer says, Is this really the case? Rabbi Yochan said, We learned fear of sin from a virgin. And we learn how to properly receive reward from a widow. And how do we do that? You're a slave, me besula. How do we learn fear of sin from a virgin? Rabbi Yochanan Shama U Besua the Nefa Apa. Rabbi Yochanan heard about a virgin and she fell on her face. The Kama Ribonashalom, she said, Master of the universe, Parasa Ganeda and Ubarasa Ganem. You created the Garden of Eden and you created hell. Parasa Tzadikim and Parasa Rashaim. Created the Tzadikim and Rashaim. Here it's on Hanecha Shalikashu Bibin Adam. I pray that men don't sin because of me, that they please prevent them from sinning. So we'll, we're going to get back to that in a little bit. So, but anyway, how could Rabbi Yochanan say pray, girls who pray destroy the world when here the, Rabbi Yochanan says we learn from this virgin fear of sin and kibul star me almana? And how could he say? And how could he say that that a widow destroys the world when Rabbi Yochanan said we learn about receiving reward from a widow? That there was a widow who had a synagogue in her neighborhood. But yet, every day she would go and pray in the synagogue in the neighborhood of Rabbi Yochanan. Well, she actually she wouldn't pray in the synagogue; she would pray in the base medrash of Rabbi Yochanan. Amar Abiti, what base I can ask but she vusech. Yochanan says to her, "Don't you have a synagogue in your in your neighborhood? Why do you have to come to my yeshiva? Why are you coming to my base medrash to pray?" So he says, Rabbi, don't I have, don't I get the reward for walking? So we see from here, we learned about the, the dedication to a mitzvah and the receiving the reward by going the extra, the extra bit. So how do we deal with the contradiction where it says that, that a widow destroys the world and a, a virgin who prays destroys the world? So the Lord says, well, we're referring to, to people like Yochani Kikamar Kigon Yochani Basra TV. Like Yochani Basra TV. The Gemara doesn't tell us who this person is, but Rashi cites a, a story, and the Maharaj Chais points out we don't know Rashi's source for this story. Rashi himself didn't tell us the source. Sometimes Rashi does, and here we don't see this source anywhere else. It refers to a widow who was a uh, magician, and she used to use the magic to prevent girls from giving birth. And then they would come and they would cry to her. And so she would make believe she was praying. So she was like this virgin girl praying and she would, and then she'd remove the magic and then they'd be able to give birth. Until one time there was a day laborer who caught her doing this and she was exposed. That's the type of person who destroys the world because it causes people to think 
to think that she's she's more powerful spiritually than she really is. My What does it mean when it says a minor doesn't finish his months? This is a Torah scholar who who strikes his teachers. This refers to a student who hasn't reached the age where he should be paskering halachos, and yet he does. That she kills, she killed many people, mighty people. What does it mean? She killed many people. It's first with Torah scholar who didn't reach the age where he should be paskening, and he's still paskening. Now she says, Ipiwa comes from a nafel, like a nafel, a premature baby. This is the first with Torah scholar who's reached the age where he's supposed to be paskening, but he doesn't paskin. Atsuma means he closes his eyes and mouth. He doesn't, he doesn't give to them the halacha. Bad karma, what age are you supposed to start paskening on top of 22b? At our bar and shunning. When you get to 40 years old, then you can start the pasket. Any is this the case? Well, the Gemara says, well, Rava, Ori, but Rava pasket when he was at a younger age. Rava died at 40. Gemara says, Beshavim. Yeah, but Rava was clearly equal to the God of Ador, or there was nobody on his level. So clearly he could pasket. Makos Prushin, somebody who gives these makos are afflictions, Prushin of ascetics, they're destroying the world. Tanaban and Shiva Prushin, there's seven types of people who are considered ascetics or are destroying the world. Parashikhmi, Parashkethi, Parash Kizai, Parash Meduchya, Parash Machavasi, Vesenach. The Parash who says, What is my debt? And I'll, and I'll, he says, Tell me what my debt is and I'll make it up to you. Parash Mayava, somebody who who separates from love and parsh meyira? Somebody who separates from fear. The Gemara is going to explain what all this is. Parsh shechmei. What is that? Now, also my shlem. This is somebody who acts like shlem, meaning to say the people of shlem. They showed, oh look how nice they am, but really they weren't. They were not keeping the mitzvahs for the right reasons. They were getting a bris just because they wanted to kidnap Dina. Parsh nikfi zam mankif as raglav. Somebody who bangs his knees. He's walking around saying, "I'm so humble." So somebody walks around with his eyes closed because he claims he's so pious and he bangs into the wall and he starts pleading. What is that? That he's always walking around with his head down. False pretenses like a pestle. The guy who says, tell me what I owe you and I'll pay it. What's wrong with that? Isn't that a good thing? He says, tell me what else I owe you, and I'll do it. <laughs> he thinks he's, I solved every problem. He says, what else do I owe you? Meaning, say, I paid everything else. Somebody separates from love or from fear. So Abayi and Rava said to the person who was citing over this price, uh, don't, don't include those two categories. person should always engage in Torah mitzvahs, even not for the right reasons. Because eventually you'll do it from the right reasons. So don't, don't say there's anything wrong with, with uh, saying I'm going to serve God out of great love of God or out of great fear of God, because eventually you'll do it not love for the reward, but love for Hashem, which is a good thing. Don't say I'm just doing it. Don't say there's something wrong with saying I'm doing it for the love of the mitzvah, of the reward of the mitzvah, because eventually you'll come to do it for love of Hashem. I'm Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. So Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, "The mitamra mitamra, the secrets are hidden from from man. With the megalia megalia, and the revealed things are revealed to man. But beidina raba, lispara mehani dechafu gundari, but." Uh, Nevertheless, the heavenly court knows everything, and that will that will be able to cover from those people like these Prushim who are making believe that they're so pious, but they're really not so pious. Like the people who pretend they're so pious when they're really not. I'm what Yana Malko would say. 
Yani Malki said to his, his wife before he died, Don't be afraid of the Purushan. The Purushan were the rabbis. Don't be afraid that the rabbis are going to come for you after I'm gone. Or also don't be afraid from the people who are anti the Purushan and, and, and are not like the rabbis, who are not what we would call religious. Just be afraid of those people who are fakers. Shadomal Purushan. They're sim, they look like the Prussian. Shema saying Kamase Zimri, Levachin, Sarakapinchas. Those people there, their actions are like Zimri, who fornicated in the temple with Cosby, but really they won't reward like Pinchas. Those are the people you have to fear from. Be afraid of the fakers. Those are the people who are the problem. Now we come to the Mishnah on the bottom of Chafbez and Mabez. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Ein Sostoa. So even though we learned earlier in the previous Mishnah that if a woman drinks the bitter waters, if she has a merit, a merit could suspend the punishment for up to three years. And now Rabbi Shimon says, no, the bitter waters, you can't get a suspended punishment. And if you say, yeah, that the merit will suspend the punishment with the bitter waters, then in actuality, you're going to be clouding the waters in front of all the women, all the women who are drinking, it's going to be a cloud over them. And then the people are going to start gossiping about all the women. They'll be Motsi Shema, like our parasha. Mitzora stands for Motsi Shema. You say something bad about people. Uh, because all the women who drink will say something bad. The people say, oh yeah, they're really sinned. But the merits protected them. Rebbe disagrees. He says the merit will suspend your sentence by the bitter waters. And it, she won't be able to give birth. And she and she won't get healthier. She's just going to become weaker and weaker. In the end, she's going to die from that same death. Says the Gemara, let's say the woman, she's bringing the Soto offering and it becomes Tame. Now there's two types of Tame. There's two types of Hektish. There's something that's Kedusha Saguf and Kedusha Stamim. Kedusha Saguf is when the item is ready to be brought as a sacrifice. And Kedusha Stamim is where the money is sanctified, but it's not yet transferred into something that could be brought as a sacrifice. So if the Mincha became Tomei, Ajla Kacha before she actually sanctified it in the utensil of the temple, so then it's just Kedusha Stamim, it's just the money sanctified, Harei Kechoam and Nacha. So it's like all the grain offerings. And it can be redeemed. You can take it and basically purchase it from the temple. And then you can use the grain for your own purposes and use that other money to buy more. But if she had already sanctified it in the Kushari, so now it has Kedusha Sakuf, well, now since it's Kedusha Sakuf and it's Tamei, with Tisarif, it needs to be burned. So now we're going to the, now the mission is going to tell us these are the carbon Minchos. They need to be burnt. How Mara asks, we're on the top of 23a. Let's see, she says, she says, I sinned. So there's no point for her to uh, to um, to bring the offering anymore because she's admitting it. So she, now she doesn't drink the bitter waters. Or Shabala Adam she or witnesses come. Or if the witnesses come and tell us. She to mace, or if the witnesses come and tell us that she that she sinned. So again, there's no point for the bitter waters. Valmaras any shota if she refuses to drink. Or Shabawa in a rotoashkosa. Or if her husband decides he doesn't want to make her drink. Or Shabawa Bawa Or if the husband had relations with her on the road there, we know that he's not allowed to. Once he, she has to drink the bitter waters, first mission and soda tells us you send two tourist scholars to watch him. So all these places, 
She doesn't drink the bitter water, so the mincha has to be burnt. The Kohan is suos with Kohanim. Minchosei and Nisrachos. And anybody who was married to the Kohen, we're going to say their carbon mincha is burnt. Because what's the reason why their carbon mincha is burnt? Rashi says, even if they brought the comets properly and it didn't become tummy, it's burnt. What's the reason? The Gemara is going to explain because their husband is a Kohen. And the Kohen has, and, and so the husband has a, has a part owner of the mincha. And by a mincha of a Kohen, we say it says in the Torah called Mincha's Kohen, Kawil Tiyah Every cover mincha of the Kohen is burnt, it's not eaten. And so therefore, even if this mincha was not Tamei, and even if it was brought properly, the shiarim of the mincha are burnt. Okay, we'll stop here, God willing. I want to make an important announcement.